guys, uh, I've just hit so, record. So. Uh, this episode is going to go out specially to EOM, MCs of Malaysia, because I've got uh, these two homeboys in here, uh, Terrence and uh, Cody. Terrence is still working hard, even though it's MCO, but he's in RTM, so government, so we zip it. We don't say anything. Uh, he, he, he's got a get out of jail, get out of jail three pass. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a get out of jail letter, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, you actually have a letter to drive around, dude. How cool is that? Well, I don't use it to drive around. I have to get to work and then back home. So it's like, what, what uh, I mean is, for for some of us, you know, even the opportunity to just drive would be, I, I'll take it, like, you know, I'll be your Ahmad lah for two days. Let me know. <laughs> I'll sit in. I'll I'll drive you sit in the back, and who knows? Nobody will know the better. So Terrence, you're actually in Penang or Yeah. No. Uh, KL, KL at the moment. He's in RTM, dude. Cody, he's in RTM now. Ah, he's, yeah. he's joining us from RTM. Ooh, cool. <laughs> I know. Okay, but guys. So the, the reason I wanted to do this is because uh, since MCAO started, I've just been doing some video logs just to... Um, mm. Well, not video logs, but I'm trying to continue my... Uh, what I've been doing with my little talk show. And I figured um, a lot of people were saying, why not just get people together and also get a chance to talk to them and, and get their point of view. So I figured this is ideal. I just didn't know that mm. you're going to be at work itself. So thanks for still joining us, uh, Darren. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, done. I'm done for the day. But uh, yeah, you're most welcome. Yeah. W William, because he's keeping an eye on his older folks. So he's like, you know, what? it'll be a bit difficult for me to join in. Melvin, as usual, even though with all that's going on, he's probably doing something. So <laughs> I don't think he could join us. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I just wanted to to get us all together here as a, a, a chance to just share more. I mean, I know when I interviewed you, uh, Terrence, you you already gave a lot of tips, but I think uh, you know that's been what I don't know six months. Quite a, yeah, yeah, quite a while. Quite a while, back, right? Was it? Yeah, yeah, six months. Yeah, six months. Yeah. So I figured uh, here's another good chance for us to to just uh, put it out there and just kind of like uh, keep it raw, share some tips. Cody, how long have you been emceeing? Because huh? I don't know, lah, bro. How long? Uh? Um, as a full-time MC, about um, 10 years, I guess. Yeah. So you're, taking, you're taking this MCO and from home very serious. Uh, you don't even shower. Uh, look at your hair. What? Yeah. <laughs> your, 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 your... Shave, you know, it's like... But, yeah. Well, the, ma sure, the but man it's... has twins. Yes. Uh, that's the thing. Okay. And my kids is totally under control, really. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I, th I thought you're going for the Korean look, like you know the the, the messed up hair <laughs> thing. I, mean, I I know Terrence got no hair, you know, but doesn't mean you take advantage and mock the poor fella, lah. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is like I try not to shave. Then it's like this is this is the the facial hair after like a seven days. But I think it's like I'm I'm like a typical China man, like you know. Bro, I'm not referring I mean, to your like, facial hair. You, you know. It's like, I'm not too sure after one whole month, it's like, how, how is it going to be? I think it'll be like long and silky, like those like Chinese Kung Fu master kind of thing. On it. I, I'm the, like a typical Chinaman. Uh. But yeah. I wasn't referring to your facial hair, bro. I'm talking about your hair on your head. <laughs> My hair, yeah. Mm, okay. okay. Any, anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, I think the whole purpose here was just for us to, to, to just uh, share from our hearts uh, what has worked for us and what hasn't worked for us. Uh, so, Terrence, if you could just yeah. remind everyone again, uh, I mean, the fact that you're now, did you just do, was it a news broadcast or was it a live show that you just did? I did a live show yesterday. So, yeah, that was uh, Sound Pagi Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. And today, are you allowed to tell us what you're doing in RTM? Oh, it's just uh, recording voiceovers for packages, basically on Understand. this. So, that one is will be released from time to time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, I think uh, just to summarize it, and I want to keep this short and sweet, not too long. Um, just tips from you, from you, Cody, and then maybe even from me. And in fact, honestly, if you guys want to ask me any questions, please feel free. Okay. Uh, but but uh, I'll, I'll start with you, uh, Terrence, because I think you've been doing this for how long now? Again, remind me. Ooh, uh, professionally, I think we've eighteen years already. Yeah. There we go. So both of us are, are pretty much professionally earning a wage eighteen years. So. Uh, Cody, um, you're our, uh, our our younger brother in the yeah. industry, ten, 10 years old, but it's it's still good because, uh, you know, I think a lot of things have happened. So for us, it's coming up on two decades. For you, it's uh, one decade one down. Decade. Yeah. Uh, but in fact, after this, I'm going to get a whole series of the girl MCs together and get their point of view. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I, I want to get a good, yeah. So anyway, so uh, uh, Terrence, what would you just put it out there, um, especially with what's going on now? 
what can mm. we as MCs do to first of all occupy our time, uh, secondly upskill upskill ourselves, yeah, mm. uh, and and thirdly, um, uh, I mean, what can we work on so that when we come out of this, we come out stronger? Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, but just to, to add to that, I think this is the first time we've ever had something like this ever in our industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have been in this industry for 18 years. I think maybe you or so, uh, uh, John, uh, can attest to this. We've never had like an MCO where public events are completely cancelled and you mm. can't gather in spaces and all that. Uh, we have seen recessions but nothing quite like this. I mean, even throughout a recession, normally there will be some events that go on, promotional activities. Uh, business needs to move on in some way and form, and that's always uh, involved events to a certain extent. Yeah. So I think this is an unprecedented event that we're seeing. Uh, economically, I think you call it a black swan. Uh, but uh, in, to answer your question as to what we can do to keep ourselves busy i think the most important thing would be to work on things that you feel you don't really uh, you're not really strong at at the moment uh, you can do that by watching videos you can do that by i don't know working out if you think you're a little bit overweight you think a little bit uh, underweight run some muscle i think this is a great time to actually do those things uh but the most important thing hang on how did this thing get in here okay <laughs> uh, the most important thing i think is the financial part of it because you want to be uh, a bit more secure moving forward, right? So educate yourself on some financial uh, nuances. Uh, the most basic thing I think you can do is to uh, take up a course in uh, buying shares or learn a bit about some financial knowledge when it comes to what you need to add to your portfolio so that you are not left completely defenseless when something like this hits you. Uh, financial people will tell you you need about six months of salary set aside somewhere so you're safe in the case of an emergency. Uh, and it is not to press the panic button, but we don't know when this thing will go back to normal, so to speak. So yeah. the financial knowledge and tools, I think those are very important. And a lot of us, I think, neglect this part. Uh, mm -hmm. We assume that things are going to go back to normal, firing on all cylinders, and that's the best case scenario. But what yep. if it doesn't? And you know, some of us who are in this full time have to sort of uh, rely on other sources of income. Uh, then what? So yep. to answer the then what question, I would say the financial markets are the best place to sort of some money right now uh, if you know what you're doing you're going to come out of this uh, really with a very good portfolio okay and uh cody what's your take on this mm, not too sure because it's like uh, right now i'm trying to yeah try to pick up my video editing skill oh <laughs> yeah so it's like uh, i have like oh, a well, that's great has, has been that's so something i don't know how to do huh? hello yeah, yeah, yeah we're here yeah, yeah, because like I try to pick up like some of the video editing skills, and I have like a few videos, and yeah. So at first, I'm still not so sure what am I going to do. As in, like this is my first time like hitting me on this, and mm -hmm. yeah, mm. my house at the meantime is a bit chaos, but uh, everything is still under control because mm. like, I have two kids to handle, and then my whole routine is like I I I, I suddenly like a full time dad. So I have to shower my kids while my my, my wife is like uh, uh, doing the cooking. And then, yeah, so apparently when you have kids at home, you don't have really much of the me time. So my me time is, is actually midnight. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, hey, Cody, I just want to ask you real quick, right? As, as an MC, right, did you see something like this coming or not? Did you no. see that no. uh, this could happen? Hmm. Yeah, because it's like a, a, a when... I guess in end of fact, then I guess it's like a lot of like uh, events been mm. cancelled, and that really hits me. I yep. start to mm. worry. It's mm. like, yeah, how am I going to survive like next few months? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it start it start worried like, Start to get worried. So yeah. like, yeah. At the meantime, still not too sure. Is like how to enhance myself. As in like, yeah, just see more videos. See like um, how how people do things and and try to. Try to get in the inspiration. Yeah. So, mm. I mean, just to answer the same question myself, guys. I mean, mm. I think uh, right. we, we're all in the same boat together. None of us uh, <laughs> saw this rug yes, yes, out yes. from under us. 
Uh, and and for me, more so because you know, I my 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 first core business is running events or producing events, right? And 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 that started happening in January when we started getting the postponements, mm. uh, and and it's you know it's dragging on till June, and we don't uh, the recovery rate uh, from what I heard might be easily twelve to eighteen months, you know, uh, really globally, yes. uh, no globally as well, mm. globally as well, and so I mean. Yes, we're going to have to stay positive. We're going to have to uh, assume that uh, you know everything's going to come back to normalcy. But I think uh, just what you said there, uh, Terence, is also I think very good. Info, uh, good, up, I guess, good info for the rest of us out there. I think the key thing is we shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket, man. If not, we are yeah. so, something like this is going to really screw us over, you know. But yes, I, 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 but I, I but I think. But I think uh, for everyone out there, especially for the MCs, uh, be it the juniors and seniors, I mean, I think this is a perfect time because half the time, a lot of us are very busy. We're always uh, on the go. Mm. Uh, in fact, this for me now has become detox. It's like <laughs> mental detox. I don't know, like physical, spiritual, whatever detox you want to call it. Like, because for the first time, we're literally forced to stay at home. I've, yeah. never yes. actually, I've never actually stayed at home. I mean, I've been staying here for nine years. I have never, ever stayed at home, <laughs> at home. for seven days in a row. Yeah, like, that's, a, you know, that's a luxury, bro. No, that's a luxury. And, and Cody, for you to spend time with your family and become a full-time dad, as you just said, I mean, whether it's a boon or a bane, I, I let you <laughs> figure that out. But... In reality, a lot of people, especially for the parents, uh, especially those with young kids, it's like now you are forced to have quality time with your kids, lah. Yes, know? in yeah. in so, the way, but you you just get yeah. to figure out like uh, they have like full energy, so you just have to find ways to try to drain their energy, as in like yeah. Oh, true, true. But you know, I think uh, as 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 Terence mentioned, this is unprecedented. You know, we've never ever ever had this, and and this pandemic is actually the the one that is literally upending the entire globe, yeah? So, yep. it's like, none of us can actually say when this is going to uh, yeah. come together, when things are going to be fine. But that doesn't mean we, we give up all hope and throw caution to the four winds. I mean, yes, for us MCs or for those of us who are earning this uh, as a full-time bread and butter, obviously, this really does affect us. But I think the key thing here, as Terrence was saying, is I think... Staying physically and active, mentally active, spiritually is up to you. But mm. the day to day, but how else can we upskill ourselves? Now you mentioned Cody, you're you're working on editing, uh, you're watching videos and, and things like that. Terence, do where do you uh, do you do any form of homework? Uh, may, maybe of course up until all that happened, you were very busy around the clock because I think on average, maybe two to three, maybe four gigs a week, yada yada, and and your other businesses and all that. But how how have each of you uh, actually uh, improved your craft, perfected your your craft, and and now that we have the time mm -hmm. on our hands, what else can we do, Terence? Uh, yeah, I think I think I, I spoke to you about this, John, in the interview. I'm trying to move away from uh, full time MCing, and I think I already did that to a certain extent last year. So the three to four gigs a week and all that 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 was already moving away from full time uh, dedication towards just MCing and uh, being on TV and stuff like that. I've been focusing a little bit more on business and uh, not. Uh, in the traditional sense, uh, in events, totally away from events, uh, yep. food, I've been doing some uh, stuff at the airport. And uh, all those businesses are now affected. So regardless of where you are in the world, what kind of mm -hmm. business you're doing, you're still affected. Uh, so for now, I think what I would like to do uh, personally for myself would be still uh, upskill, but in things like finance and learning a bit more about where to put my money. Uh, because... As you know, in this industry, we make quite a decent uh, living. Um, but if we live beyond our means or live up to the standard that we earn, I think that's a bad idea to begin with. So mm. I think this crisis has taught a lot of us that living way below your means, uh, way, way below your means is, is a good idea. You can leave more aside for savings. So savings alone also at this point in time, not such a good idea because interest rates are coming down and if you put your money in unit trust, you're probably going to feel it at this moment in time. So where do you put your money? And that's the question I've been trying to answer by uh, learning a uh, bit more about the financial market. So yep, Tara, the share market. Uh, uh, do you like attend 
attend classes and to learn all this or you just like to learn mm. it through online? I think classes help to a certain extent, Cody. That, that part I already did uh, last year. But oh, uh, a lot of information, you need to sort of go and dig it out for yourself. So uh, don't just focus on one guru. Don't just listen to one person. Don't just follow one news channel. Uh, go dig up more information. There are some tried and tested truths like, you know, put your faith in gold. That, that kind of thing is really uh, paying dividends right now. Because if you had put your money in gold last year, uh, today, the price is somewhere like 211 ringgit per gram. Uh, that's really high compared to last year. So those kind of things, I think, would have really helped a lot of people. Uh, then again, you have to take action. Lah. So when you learn these things, the most important thing is you've got to take action. If you just learn and then you keep it yeah, uh, yeah. stored knowledge, it's, it's also no point. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that's very interesting. I think uh, that's actually very helpful to, it's going to be very helpful to a lot of others to, to really look at, at, at things like this now, because this form of investment or this form of, uh, you know, separating your eggs from the same basket will probably be very helpful for those of us in the gig economy, because that's, that's who we are. We are gig economy workers, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's not just us, it's the musicians, it's, um, you know, plenty of others, you know, like it's, it's a whole tidal wave that's affecting every one of us. Um, but with regards to just bracing ourselves for the coming months, uh, how what are, how is this affecting and, and your your mental state of mind, Terence? Uh, because like I said, I earn a certain amount, but I live way below that amount. So at the moment, uh, I'm quite fine. I'm able to sustain myself basically for another year. This keeps up for another year with uh, no income from MC. So right. I'm quite okay. But that was the, because uh, I already made a conscious decision. No unnecessary family holidays, no lu- unnecessary luxuries. I mean, I drive yep. the same car I drove six years ago. Yep. So it's basically like a conscious decision to live way below your means. And I think uh, that has helped. Um, but for those who are already now living that certain lifestyle, maybe you want to think about this in, in perspective because you have a moratorium coming up, so take full advantage of it. Yeah, that, that'll be my, my primary advice. Take full advantage of the moratorium. Try not to worry about loans for another six months. Uh, use whatever money you have right now. Focus on those low-hanging low fruits that I think you can see. Um, because uh, I, I'm just going to give a quick tip. Look at companies that have been hit hardest by this and look uh, for that point in time where they're going to come up again. Those are the companies you need to buy. So you're talking about yeah, uh, sh- the share market and, and sh- stocks and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That, yeah. that thing is the only place you can make some money right now. There's no other real functioning business at this point in time. I love it how you've become a financial guru and that wasn't even the top <laughs> that, that wasn't even the angle I was going for. But but that's great. I know. Actually that's that's very vital uh, advice actually, which you know, a lot of others would be like, oh crap, what do we do? Uh, you know, are we, are we just going to sit at home and, and, and just wait for things to happen? But if, if you said, yeah, as you said, if there's a little extra that you have, uh, the only way to to make it grow now is probably that way. And, and I think I think that's where for those who probably need extra help, they can probably reach out to you because you seem to uh, you seem to have your you seem to have your. <laughs> I know the financial not. guru. <laughs> no, but I mean, what I'm saying is, for, especially for those who are on EOM. Uh, and might need some advice. I think this is great that you've shared this because they can actually reach out to you uh, with zero advice needed for emceeing, but on this angle, because, Mm. I mean, that's I'm putting it out there happily without asking you, but uh, (laughs) since you've openly talked about it, I mean, I'm I'm sure you wouldn't mind sharing further tips if anybody keen wanted some keen uh, knowledge on that. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. But but I wouldn't say that I can tell you exactly which company to go and buy and you know make some money right now but this is just stuff that i'm doing so if you do it yeah, as well yeah. uh, you're yeah, yeah. Yeah. no but <laughs> what i'm saying is, okay. what i'm saying is uh we're, we're, i'm not asking you in in depth so there's probably right. a little bit more there's a little bit more uh details there that you could share if somebody was genuinely just like interested. a piece of advice kind of thing like. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. i'm not no, calling no, you robert no, kiyosaki no. Like. i didn't say you're robert kiyosaki <laughs> chill chill no, no, bro, no, bro. John, I'm, no, I'm I'm that. That. no, 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 no. Yeah, what's uh-huh. your plan actually? It's like, yeah. So, so for me, um, and and this is also uh, me speaking to a lot of event company owners because uh, you know that's my primary concern uh, as, as a business owner. 
Um, what we are going to do to weather the storm is obviously take advantage of, of all these things that are currently being activated, uh, the directive that's coming down from Bank Negara. Uh, so I'm going to be speaking to my banks today, actually. I'm going to get on the phone with them uh, to see how we are going to be uh, able to tap into all of this that's being made available for us. Because for us as SMEs, uh, there's no time now to hold our head up and pretend like we're going to be all, like it's all hunky-dory. Right now, mm -hmm. it's a survival survival mode. So uh, my job is to take care of my flock, which is my, my, my team. You know, I'm going to do whatever I can to weather the storm with them. And I actually, I speak on behalf of every single event company owner that I've spoken to. Because for all of us, our people are our lifelines. And um, right. we, we, will, we will have to do whatever it takes because through good times and bad times, right? Mm -hmm. and we're not just going to enjoy ourselves when everything is hunky-dory and then pretty much um, throw, throw into the four winds and say, thank you very much, have a great life. Uh, but I think uh, we are actually, uh, at least me, myself now, I'm, I'm literally going to activate uh, a few things just to um, get through what we feel is hopefully just going to be a six-month run. But if it is going to be 12 months uh, and, and more than... Obviously, we will also hope and pray that government and the banks will come behind us to, to see us through. Because it's not just us, dude. It's everybody. Every yeah, yeah, I know. exactly. Mm -hmm. Everyone I know. I'm speaking to my friends in America and the shit is hitting the ceiling there. Restaurants are closing. The hotels in Vegas have laid off, you know, how much of their staff. Vegas is now just not happening. Yeah? Okay. And that's the, yeah, the yeah. capital of the world. So, you know, mm. it, it, it's, I, I don't want to preach gloom, but the reality of it is the whole world is affected. So at this point, only the government and the financial system can do their part to help all of us business owners. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and you millionaires out there, you know, you can help us as well. <laughs> you, you, read, you read between the lines? <laughs> 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 since, since both of you are already online, can can I just uh, I have a question to ask? If let's say everything backs to normal, really, then it's like it's a new start. And and uh, uh, what about the rates? I'm for sure it's mm. like everyone is like looking at job opportunity, and then yeah, things will might might happen this way. It's like uh, your your usual rate might not be your user usual rate anymore. Is it? So that's a very good point, Cody. In yeah. fact, because I, I personally feel that clients might take advantage of the situation mm -hmm. uh, and, and start expecting a more for less. And not just for the mm -hmm. MCs, uh, but it cascades to the yeah, entire for your, event. For your right? events as well, right? The entire event budget. Uh, although I think the, the big corporates, they're not going to be so conniving per se, but probably some of the local brands and local businesses might try to be funny, right? Uh, but again, mm -hmm. all I'm saying is, uh, that's a great question. Terrence, what's your take on that, huh? How how do uh, MCs and talents uh, weather weather that storm? You know, because <laughs> that obviously, is obviously you know like, it's after storm. Then it's like once we get yeah. out, and then it's the survive. I mean, like surviving mode really. So you might take the first job in a very low price, but then it's like client might take the advantage. It's like, hey, you see, yeah, other people might. You already did that. Rate. Then yes, yeah. yes, yes. How can we just slowly pick up back to our normal rates kind of thing? So I'm going to start by, by echoing what John said. A lot of events have been postponed. So by postponed, it would mean that they've already paid you a deposit and mm. you're kind of sitting on that date, uh, that moving target of a date. So you already have a deposit. Uh, yeah. The worst thing that could happen would be some clients say, hey, we can't afford the extra 50%. Can you just work with that 50%? Uh, which yep. I do advise you to turn down uh, and try to get some, uh, some uh, justification because they've already signed you contractually to that uh, 100% of money, whatever it was. But for new clients that come in right after and uh, it's uh, post-crisis, so to speak, and these are your regular clients, I think you can give them a little bit of a discount. They know your rates. They know your talent. They know where you stand in the market. So if you're going to just say, no, and I'm going to stick to my all-time high price and uh, this is going to be it, I also think that we need to be a bit more understanding of the situation. And as John said, it is global. And I mean, Vegas has shut down. Uh, you can only imagine our tiny little event industry compared to Vegas, of course, uh, here in Malaysia. 
and also across the pond. I mean, Singapore, although everything is is up and running, right? Events are not what it used to be. No. Like cancellations in Singapore as well. Yeah, yeah. and even uh, up north in Thailand, where we also do some shows, uh, there's also been cancellations and postponements. So it's yeah. it's across the board. It's everywhere, and I don't think it'd be right to say stick to your guns, use the same amount of budget. Uh, you have to you have to honor these kind of rates, um, and I do think every other cascading industry like hotels and uh, every sort of service sector is also going to be starting off from a very low base. So perhaps we should revisit our rates as well. I, I think uh, Terence, you're absolutely right, and I think uh, echoing uh, your sentiments and actually the angle of the question, Cody. The entire uh, economy, I think globally, is going to restart, you know. This is going to be a reboot and everyone's going to take stock of their business modules, of their way of operating, of their, their cost structures. And I dare say even for us in the events business, I mean, obviously, quality continues, but price points will change because the same clients might not have the original amount of money that they intended to, to spend because everyone's being cautious, right? It's top down. So I think even on us, on our part, we are, and, and we've always uh, abided by those principles, which is we work with a client's budget mm. and we, we give them solutions based on how much they have to spend, not based on how much I demand because we don't do that. Oh. We, always, we always work with any client's budget and we give them solutions within that budget. And I think that, should cascade down to our vendors, our talents, our suppliers. And that's really where I am. I always stand in the middle because on one part, I'm a talent. On another part, I'm also representing uh, my clients. And so it's my job to find equilibrium so that everyone goes home happy. But I think when this, uh, when we come out of this, I definitely think it's going to be a major reset. It's like a factory reset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Factory Correct. reset. You know, uh, mentally... Correct. Uh, we, we have to reboot ourselves, uh, just the way we operate. And I think this is going to be a huge wake-up call for, for everyone. And I mean everyone, yeah? Because uh, even the, the big boys are shaking. Like, nobody... I mean, obviously, okay, the really big boys, they are ready to weather any storm. But for mm. everyone else, where yeah. the fact that we're now at home, uh, this is something the world has never seen. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if you look at the big boys also, like Air yeah. Asia, right? At one point in time, their share price was at 4 ringgit and 14 cents. And today, it's like 60 cents. So it's like way below what you would expect them to be at. And when they you know, restart air travel again uh, to international ports, which right now they can't do, they only uh, focus on domestic travel. Uh, yeah. When they restart their international portfolio again, I don't think the prices that they offer are going to be very high. And also the good thing is oil prices are down. So I think yeah. they, they're going to start at a lower point. So that would definitely mean that everything else that cascades from that has to also take a little bit of a, a bump downwards. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we can go out there and say, you know, oh, I've been in the industry for 25 years, yeah. 60 it's like, years, 70 like years. It's like a new start <laughs> once again, right? But, but I is, think, Cody, I mean, I don't think what uh, Terry, uh, what Terrence is saying is literally we go back and start uh, selling ourselves at Taiwan. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I think um, you, you, you should, and I, this, I speak on behalf of, of, of all of us, and I think this, each of us should uh, this. Uh, search deep and 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 give it some thought and 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 you know, I think you know your value, you know your worth, but you also know that there are specific clients who come to you because they want you, they're comfortable to work with you, uh, and, and so that's where, as Terence said, give and take, right? Give and take. So, and more importantly, they also understand that this is bread and butter, you know. Yeah, so yeah. you can't be exactly going out there and lelonging yourself you know, to the, to the highest bidder, so to speak. Mm. Uh, so if I were you, you know, if your, your price was X, maybe drop it by 500 max of a thousand. I think that mm -hmm. that might be fair to everyone. Right. What do you think? Yeah, what do you yeah. think there? Uh, I think everyone's going to be looking at a 20% downward 20%. anyway. 20% yeah. downward anyway. So uh, give or take, that, that, that's very comfortable, uh, 1,000 to 500. Uh, but also for those on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, there's another cost factor that they need to look at, which is their everyday cost. 
yeah. if they are already earning below thousand ringgit per event or somewhere between a thousand to thousand five, and they go and give a uh, you know five hundred ringgit discount, that's going to eat into their bread and butter. Uh, mm, correct. So. That spectrum of the market, I'm not sure that this advice would uh, be comforting to them. No, but I say okay. Then let's. Uh, I think that's where you said that 20 to 30 percent is the mark that we need to look at. Yes. Forget the uh, forget the amounts I mentioned. Not important. Okay. okay. About like no, 10%. But, Okay. Yeah. Mm. I w- I would say, right. I think 20 to 30 percent is again. I mean, if your client is willing to pay your original price, go ahead. I mean, I would say yeah. almost just say. This is my price point. Uh, do let me know if there's any issue with it. So happy just, to negotiate. Happy to negotiate, or or happy to reconsider. Just put it out there so that clients know that it's a willing buyer, willing seller situation, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. I, 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 I and think, as you said, two two to six months, right, John? Two to six months from now yeah. would be somewhere in September or maybe October. So that's approaching the normal peak season. Mm. I think when peak season arrives, if recovery is two to six months, uh, we should be able to go back to our normal rates by December. But if recovery is on a staggered pace of 18 months, then I think you should just hold your price at 20% down. Yeah, Yeah. everything gets... gets Mm. But I I really feel that it's a case-to-case basis because I'm pretty sure there are clients who will be willing to pay your usual fees just because mm. they, they know what you're bringing to the table. I, so I really feel it's case to case, but... Uh, Wouldn't that be unfair though, John, if you, if you say it, if it's case yeah. to case, right? And client A finds out, hey, wait a minute, I paid you so much, but yeah, this guy says he paid you so much. Mm, and just, just picking your brain on that. Well, yeah. It's just that I've never had clients going around, <laughs> digging around and finding out price points. Well, maybe it's never we happened. Should, we should just offer to like a, a new client's as in like that's kind of like introductory price and then to See, the old clients but but it's, yeah. it's very subjective I, I would say it's kind of like a very subjective issue we really because my point of view on that is once you go down you cannot come back up you know yeah and and and, mm. and when the market gets word that you know at some point uh, your price points dropped if, especially if it was a significant drop then that's also a negative right it's a double negative you know because you've just uh there's a loss of income and, and then the word gets out and then for you to climb back up on Tuesday your previous rates. So I would almost say that, I mean, this is just me also as an event planner because when I get rates for my talents, uh, I only negotiate when I really have to. If not, whatever the original asking price is something that I will honor also because I'm a talent as well, right? right so I right. think I would say, I would, I would actually say that we should all stick to our current rates Mm-hmm. And and literally offer a client to say that hey, let me know if there's a problem. I'll be happy to see how we can make it work. Instead of happily saying okay, I'm now offering myself twenty percent off. I mean, mm-hmm. I think most of us have regular clients who who know how we work, uh, and they're not exactly going to come and bust out our balls and say, oh, I'm taking advantage of the situation. Nobody's got the money, so you're going to give it to me at this price. I mean, nobody's going to. I don't think we are going to have clients coming to us like that. But if it's a new client, as you said, I still feel, I mean, I think every one of us are charging what we're charging based on what we are bringing to the table. And yeah, right. I, I think it's okay to still open up at that price point. Mm-hmm. But, just, but just let clients know that, hey, if there's a problem, just let us know. We'll be happy to relook at, at everything. Without so also, I think it is important to to let you know people watching this know that there is no one right answer. So, mm-hmm. John, you're starting high and and uh, offering that uh, flexibility there. Uh, yeah, for for right. me, I would start with that twenty percent off, and I would stick to that for six months, and then go back to the uh, normal rate. So that oh. that's uh, our difference in strategy, I guess. So, no, but that's actually a good strategy as well. If you make it known to everyone, that way there's no right. client who can turn around and say like, hey, how come I heard about, like, like what happened, what we mm-hmm. done, we mm-hmm. like five minutes ago, like, hey, I, I Correct. You. Correct. You kind of like, so if we put it out there and it's available that anyone can come across, like whether it's on your IG or your Facebook or, or you send out a little memo to everyone, to existing clients, to event companies, yada, yada, then the buzz, it's out there. Nobody can say, oh, 
uh, this guy got a deal because he negotiated directly with you, but you're still charging me your, you know, your your, your mm. usual asking price. So if we put it out there, then I guess it's fine. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. And I think uh, it it does. Yeah, man. I mean, again, so it's just all about how you want to strategize, right? So as for and how we recover. From here, yeah, <laughs> correct, correct, your, your yeah. advice is like maximum, it's uh, uh, giving a, a, a discount about like 20%. That's the uh, no, don't say discount, don't use the word, okay? Discount. Don't, don't yeah. say discount, as in like uh, uh, with this situation, then this is the this is the rate for six months. So after six months, then we will slowly tune back to our normal rate. Am I right? We can uh, just call it a COVID 19 this... special, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> because after six months, we'll be peak season again, so yeah, really yeah, unfair. yeah. Or for clients to to go back to that COVID special, but like um, if we are looking at um, like I said, staggered recovery of one year, I think mm. we should be prepared for these very uh, yeah, for this very hard have time to be prepared within like uh, this twelve months. This is going to happen, mm. I guess. Yeah, because yeah. the the recovery uh, is uh, prefaced on on a few things: um, the viral cure that they're looking at. How they're going to restructure the retroviral drugs available for uh, for cure, uh, which will be two to six months. That's mm. medicine. Um, vaccine will take about eighteen months, so that's the timeline for recovery, basically. But then there's the other theory of herd immunity, which is what they're trying out in the UK, where people are basically um, testing the theory. I don't think it's a very safe thing to do, but they're allowing their young population to go out to work and uh, you know get infected, come back, develop immunity, and go out again. I don't think this is a very sound strategy, but people in the UK feel that a lot of people are just alone at home anyway, so they won't really spread the virus to anyone else. They are basically young and uh, therefore not really affected by the virus. So that's a theory. I don't think we should follow that, but herd immunity is something they eventually want to achieve for any virus. That's based on what I have been doing research-wise for my work. Okay. All right, go Interesting, yeah. and I didn't know. I didn't know that, uh, um, Darren. I wasn't aware of that. I mean, is that something that just came online? Yeah, herd immunity. Doing? Yeah, it, it was in an interview two to three days ago. Uh, okay, I must have missed experts. that. So yeah. they don't really. They don't really. The two experts that were interviewed did not really uh, advocate for it. The two experts were from the states. They prefer social distancing and lockdowns and, sting, and things right, like that. Right. 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 Uh, which, which are definitely better because in our population, we have um, a large group of people who live with their parents and all that. So you can't really do that. You can't send the young people out to work because when you, and if you get infected, you come back home, you're going to infect the older people who are at a higher risk of uh, fatality. So it doesn't really work for us, but well, for whatever reason, they're going to try it out in the UK. Okay. Well, um, thanks guys. I mean, I think uh, some useful tips here uh, I think time to time again, you know, I mean, I think uh, I was trying to do a, a very teeny weeny way of an online masterclass here, so to speak. Just little, <laughs> tips for, little tips for the rest of our brothers and sisters who are all out there yeah. earning a living. But I think, yeah, uh, you know, these are trying times. We, we're all hoping for the best. You know, we, we want to do what we can to stay relevant, even as we sit at home and shake legs. And, and and hopefully our legging, uh, shaking of legs is going to be because we are exercising. You know, as Darren mm. said, stay at home and you know keep keep lively. Yeah. We'll work on those guns. <laughs> <laughs> I actually finished my so-called uh, exercises before we. Yeah, got I home. saw that. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm going to start as soon. I'm going to start as soon. Yeah. Awesome. You, you have guys you have two twins, man. You can like balance yeah, them up. Yeah, juggle them, them, facing them, them around. Them. Like a, yeah, that's uh, that's a workout also. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Bro. Thanks for being uh, so open, guys. Appreciate it. So Thanks. let's get through this uh, and stay safe, guys. All right. Thanks for having us, John. Thanks for all the tips. Awesome. No all worries. Right. Yeah. Take care, man. Ciao. Bye.